Jeanette Durham from Bliss Cookies. I'm gonna show you guys how to make a cute Halloween kitty cookie tutorial here. So let's get started. I need to start outlining and flooding my cookie. This is called a boo-boo stick. And then I need some napkins to keep my workspace clean. A spray bottle with some water. This is my flood frosting and this is my piping frosting. So I'm gonna show you a little trick with your frosting. This is my piping frosting, so this is the thicker consistency that I work with, and I, I usually compare it to toothpaste. So as I stir in it, you can kind of see, I get soft peaks that flop over there. There's no flow to the frosting. Um, so this is what I would use to outline the cookie, and a lot of what I use to add details on top of the cookie. So when I put my frosting in a frosting bag to decorate, I have a little trick I'm gonna share with you. It helps with cleanup. So I'm gonna grab a little bit of saran wrap here and pull out a square in front of me. And then I'm just gonna gather up all of my frosting here and put it right in the center. Then I'm gonna fold this diagonally so that it's in a little triangular pocket here. And when I lay it down in front of me, then I'm gonna cup my hands around the frosting and just seal the surround wrap to itself. And then I'm gonna start rolling from the bottom once I get it here, then I'm going to give it a good spin with my hands. So this is what I call a frosting bullet. From here, I'll get my decorating supplies here. So I need a bag. These are just the disposable decorating bags um, that I've snipped the end off of to fit a coupler down inside. And I reuse these, just wash them with soap and water. So I'm going to put the first piece of the coupler down inside the bag and then I'm going to drop my frosting bullet down inside there and the tail just pulls through the end right here. And then I use these bag clips to secure this end. The other reason I love to bag my frosting like this is not only does it let uh, or make the cleanup a lot easier, but as I'm decorating, I often switch decorating tips but want the same color of frosting, and this lets me do that without having to rebag the frosting every time. So we're gonna need that one and that one, and I'll tell you the, the numbers on those tips here in just a second. So I'll snip the saran wrap here. I'm leaving half an inch to a quarter of an inch past my coupler. And then I can put my decorating tip on top and put the other piece of the coupler over that to secure the tip while I use it. And then as I need to change tips, I can just undo that and put the next one on. So this is all I need to get started with these. The first thing I'm gonna do is start outlining the cookie. So I'm just following the true shape of the cookie here with my thicker piping frosting. As you're going around these bigger shapes, remember that you can stop and turn the cookie to keep your hand in a comfortable spot. Okay, so the outline's all done. And now I'm gonna use the thinner frosting, the flood frosting, to fill that cookie in. And I like to work from the outside in, so. Then from here, I'm gonna use my boo-boo stick to pop air bubbles that I see in the frosting and to help encourage the frosting to smooth out and fill in all of the gaps. Now 
and that's it. You'll continue and repeat that with as many cookies as you're making today. So after I've let these cookies dry for a good 30 minutes, um, I like to dry them in front of a fan just to speed things along. Now the surface is crusted over enough that we can move on to the next step and that's airbrushing. We're gonna add a little background to these cookies behind the kitty cat. So when I airbrush in my workspace, I like to lay some saran wrap down just on the table here where I'm gonna be spraying the airbrush color to help just keep things clean and easy to clean up. This is called my cookie swivel so that I can put my cookie on here while I airbrush and it makes it easy to turn. We're gonna be using a color um, called avocado. This is um, airbrush color specific for these uh, cookie airbrushes and it's made by Amerimist, Americolor. So avocado is the color we're gonna use and I'm gonna lay out my airbrush here. So I'm just laying a napkin down over the top of my swivel and then one of my dry cookies. And then I'm gonna grab a stencil over here that we're gonna to add to our background. So this one's kind of just a random crazy polka dot. So when I use stencils on my cookies, I like to use what's called a stencil holder um, to keep them still and to help hold them nice and flat against the surface of the cookie. This one's made by Sweet Sugar Bell. It's called her Stencil Snap, and I'll show you here quickly how to put this together. So I'm sizing it just for a five by five stencil like this. So once I have these two sides to the stencil snap put together, I can lay my stencil inside there. And then these two pieces will snap together like that so that as I'm airbrushing, that will help weight the stencil down and help hold it nice and flush across the top. So I'm laying that across there. Then I can turn my airbrush on. We're going to load a little bit of color here. And I always like to get the color going on a napkin before I go to my cookie. When I airbrush a stencil, I want to come and airbrush almost at a 90 degree angle above the cookie here. So I'm doing nice, smooth, even back and forth motions here. And I'm going to go over it a few times. So here I can lift my stencil snap up and off my cookie and I have my cute polka dot background. To finish the stencil off, you can see around the edges here where the cookie kind of starts to taper away from the stencil that my pattern gets kind of faded. So I'm going to kind of cover that up and give the cookie a nice finished look by going around the edges here with the exact same green color. I think I need just a little more color in here. And that's that. So these have been sitting for just a few minutes to let that green airbrush color dry a little and now we're ready to add the next color. So I'm going to 
going to set the cookie swivel back up again, put a clean napkin down underneath for me. When we decorate cookies, a lot of times we like to add the fun kind of distressed edging to our cookies. So we're gonna add a little bit of brown around the edge here. So same kind of airbrush color, but this one's called chocolate brown. So this color I'm just going to keep to the very edges of the cookie. And that's it. So while these black kitty cats are still just a little bit wet, there's one little detail I want to add to them quickly. When I use a lot of my little sprinkle embellishments, I like to put them in like a paint palette like this because the little spaces will hold my sprinkles so that they're not rolling all over the place. So I'll grab that and then I'm going to grab some tweezers. And then the sprinkles that I need are just over here. And these are some really tiny, cute little pink hearts. So I'm just going to dump a few out into one of these spaces. And then I'll use the tweezers to pick one of these up. And I'm just going to set it down on the kitty cat's face, right where his nose should go. Just like that. On these kitty cats, we're going to add um, a collar and some cute little details here. So I'm going to grab some more things over here by my sprinkles. These are purple sparkle balls and I buy them from Cookies Boutique. And again, these are something they sell in every color. And then some of the other little details that I want to add to my kitty cat. So again, I'm going to use my paint palette so that I can get some sprinkles out. And I've got my tweezers. And I need another nut. So the first thing I'm going to do is add the kitty cat's collar. So right around his neck, I'm going to use this thicker piping icing. And then I'm going to add a little ball of frosting right there so that I can pick up one of these little purple sparkle balls and set that down right in the center. And again, just tap it in with your tweezers these little royal icing roses and I save my extras for projects like this so that I don't have to make them again. And I store them in an airtight container. So from here I'm going to add, this is like glue, just a ball of that frosting and then one of my flowers. And I'll add one of these little gold stars.
So here I'm gonna change the tip on the bag that we were talking about. So if I undo the coupler, This one is a leaf tip. It's a Wilton tip. It's number 349, and it's just the real tiny leaf tip. So if I set that on there. So then I can come back over here to my flower and just add a couple of little leaves. Like that. Thanks so much for joining me today. If you want to check out more tutorials, we have a YouTube channel, Bliss Cookies, or you can find us on Facebook and Instagram. Thanks.